Also, I guess I should probably do a proper introduction. So yeah, welcome back. Um, this morning we're going to be playing some chess variants. Um, perhaps dark chess, real chess, maybe even some S chess if I can get it all going. Um, while this is all ongoing, um, I registered an account here on this site. And um, while this is all ongoing, I'll probably still still need to have breakfast. So, um, depending how long this takes to get set up, you might hear me eating a little bit. Sorry about that, I haven't had anything to eat yet. But this looks pretty exciting. Anybody can make an account. Anybody can play. I'll put a seek out there for a five minute game. And, oh, hey look, our good friend uh, Thibaut is playing. Apparently, he's here. Um, unless he happened to walk away and I just picked up his seek. I'm not sure. Um, I should actually see if I can increase this. Uh, I don't know how well that works. Maybe I could at least fix that for the window capture, though. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Wait. How come I don't see a chess window. Oh, but then I have to transform everything anyway. Well, okay, we'll stick with the normal layout here. Uh, yeah, no, apparently I took his seek while he had left, so... Let's see if we can find a different opponent. Um... We'll look for a fast game, five minutes. All right, we got an anonymous opponent. Good luck to whoever that is. Hmm. Let's just overprotect F7 like nobody's business and see what happens. Um, also, I guess Bishop B5 is a potential idea that I should watch out for. Oh, okay. Okay, so we got some trench warfare going on here. Um, not sure about why some of that's highlighting the way it is, but okay, we saw that there was a queen. Um, very briefly, we observed a queen on c2. I'm going to try to castle out of here. And I'm curious whether my opponent's going to play e5 or d5 first. Hmm. Apparently e5 didn't happen. So I'd be surprised if they like they put their bishop on d2, their queen on c1, and then started attacking. That'd be strange to me. Um, now there's a pawn on e4 if I remember right. Let me just castle. I don't care about double pawns because I get a lot of squares covered. I have tons of visibility to what's going on, and that's pretty valuable. My opponent does still have a knight. So that could mess up my day. That could ruin my day, rather. Um, let's see if we can... Oh! There's nothing over there. Very strange. Um, okay. My opponent's playing their A-pawn out because they want their rook to be able to see what's going on. That makes sense. Now, which bishop did I capture? I captured the light squared bishop. So it's not like another light squared bishop's going to pop in and ruin my day. Um, I'm concerned that a queen might find its way onto c6. I don't have a way to t Well, no, I would see that, though, given this interesting way the variant works. I can actually see squares that my pawns can move to, as well as where they can capture. All right, free knight. 
So now the trickiest piece on the board has been removed. I still need to look out for bishops, uh, or the dark squared bishop, and need to look out for a queen. Um, but there shouldn't be any surprises from here on out. All right, so there's the bishop trying to surprise me. And, um, uh, yeah, let's capture this way so I get to see where the queen is again. Um, oh, I don't get to pre-move in this. That's okay. Dark chess pre-moves would be pretty dangerous anyway. Although in this very specific situation, I'm pretty sure that I'd want to capture the queen if queen took queen. Uh, now the bishop could move and have a discovered attack if there's a rook on a1. Um, and I would see that discovered attack because it would be a rook attacking my rook. The only thing I can't really... oh. Uh, not sure what that's about. Let's just over to protect the pieces because you never know what's going to happen. Surely he's not expecting rook fa8. But I know there can't be a bishop hitting the rook. Um, huh, I wonder where he's put all his pieces. Oh, okay, there's a pawn. I was kind of afraid that a pawn might hit my knight. Um, I don't think there's a pawn on b3. Um... Let's just back up a little bit. All right. I suspect there's still a rook on a1, so this pawn is pinned. Oh, free rook? Probably not a free rook. There's nothing on the b file. Oh, there we go. I was afraid that, you know, I couldn't take the bishop after I took the rook. Say he had his other rook on b1 and he captured back. I would not take the bishop because I didn't know where his king was. But there we go. You know, it seems a little bit strange to be streaming this variant, I will say. Um, it puts me at a large, large disadvantage against somebody who might be stream sniping. Like... That could be hilarious and yet tragic, but it's still a fun variant. This is a uh, dark chess. How to do this best for the layout? I guess I just leave this in the default layout. So I'm concerned about bishop b4 ruining my day there. But yeah, after d4 and e4 have been played, I can... Oh, there it is, bishop b4. Actually, I could see that, because my pawn on b2 can move to b4. Huh. Ordinarily in dark chess, you wouldn't be able to see that. You just have to guess that it might happen. So my opponent's moves have been e6, bishop b4, bishop somewhere. I'm not sure where. Oh, but he has his pawn on e6, so that doesn't mate. Here, let's put the knight on g5 and the queen on f3 and just see what happens. I think that's too optimistic, though. Um... But with the pawn on e6, my knight's pretty invincible out here. I do wonder what he's scheming. But as long as I stay safe, I can vaguely menace stuff with my pawns in this awesome formation. 
I don't need to do anything concrete. I can just like shuffle about and wait for a piece to drop or a pawn to like show up in my um, uh, sight. Okay, there's a pawn. So he's got pawns on e6 and d5. Um, I actually kind of like this tension. So I'm going to do this. And so now I can see f6. Um, e6 and d5 are still there. I do have some holes on this light on the light squares, so that's for sure. But, you know, in exchange I get to see all the dark squares on the board. So uh, the only one I don't see is h4. So, like, if a queen just popped into h4, and if I didn't have bishop g5 just immediately trapping it, um, that could be a good trick. If you just, like, plopped a knight. <laughs> well, there's no checkmate in this variant, by the way. You have to actually capture the king. Okay, so I hit the queen. He's probably going to play f6. Uh, which is why I should have just castled and not done this right away. But, yeah, I could have always left this in reserve. Um, I don't know why he I chose to do this. I could have just waited. And so now comes the question, does he play g5? How crazy is he? Oh, he's that crazy. Okay. Yeah, I would not have taken that uh, chance there. You can see I'm playing very defensively. Um, so now I'm concerned that what if he has just a whole battery of pieces just lined up on the e-file waiting to ruin my day? It's probably not the case. Here, let's take this and see where his stuff is. Oh, that's right. He's still got the pawn in e6. Um, hmm. So if I just plunk my bishop down on d3, there won't be any surprises for a very long time. Oh, he did take my pawn, though. Wait. Alright, so he had no bishop attacking this square, so I can take it safely. I don't know where his bishops are. So if I'm, like, super reckless, bad things could happen still. Still no bishop attacking my stuff. Let's just try to bring knights forward and center-wise and you know the drill. Um, <laughs> Here, let's take a look at a5. Alright, there's a bishop lurking on a5. Oh, he can't see that I can see that though. Because the bishop doesn't move that way. Um, oh man, I don't even want to provoke that. Here, let's attack the e5 square. Just try to make him as nervous as possible by like not walking into his line of sight. Um, oh, it's my turn again. Alright, I'm concerned there might be a pawn somewhere. Actually, why don't I play this? Okay, so there's no pawn on e5. Um, actually, I should just play my rook to an open file. Um, interesting. Here, now we strike. Okay, so there was no pawn on c5. Were there a pawn there, bad things could have happened. But um, there is none, so nothing to fear. Nothing to fear but fear itself. Okay, that's a free knight. Um, now if he recaptures, my queen can see whatever's attacking on this file. So if it's a queen, 
Oh, it's not. I've already taken the queen. Oh. Oh, this is not at all what I had imagined. I thought the king would be on c8. The rook on d8. The other rook, who knows where. Um... No, this is interesting, though. The bishop on this uh, diagonal. This is why I chose not to, like, move my queen around a whole bunch, because I didn't know where this bishop was. I was also curious, like, why wasn't this bishop moving to, like, f5 or g6 or b5 or c4 or one of these squares trying to um, discover where my queen was at. But, um, yeah, uh, I lucked out. That's pretty cool. Oh, and this rook on the f files interesting too. This means he could actually see. How long was my knight hanging? It wasn't hanging because he had his knight on f5, so he couldn't do rook takes f4 until he did knight e3, and then he found that my knight was here. But then I took back and my knights defended. Okay, well that was interesting, huh? But yeah, I'm playing like super defensively. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But it it is certainly a thing. It would also be fun to like spectate dark chess games in progress. I don't know how you do um spectating and deal with like rating games and the whole Oh, somebody was spectating and they were telling my opponent where all my pieces were, sort of stuff. Now, I just found this. See, there's a thing called, um, before you go and write hundreds of lines of code, see if somebody's done it before, and if so, see if they did it good, and copy them. Um, it kind of feels like cheating, I guess, but... Alright, so... Yeah, my queen can see everything. This is beautiful. I'm thinking d4 is a strong opening move. Here. Here, let's let him move the bishop. Let's just pretend that we don't see that. <laughs> Who wants to bet that the bishop's on c5? He did take on e5. Interesting. Oh, his bishop's not there. Wait, what? How is, how is he going to make anything good of his queen being over there? Okay, now, now I'm confused. Um, Alright, let's defend the bishop. This is, like, super risky, but I don't even care. Um, yeah. I figured there was a low chance that um, he actually had a pawn on g6. Because you remember we already took the e-pawn. Um, one thing that makes this different from traditional dark chess is that pawns can see where they can move, not just where they can capture. So that makes that bishop b4... Uh, business that's so typical, I think, in dark chess. It makes it not very strong in this version of dark chess. So I want to play queen c2, but I don't know if the bishop made its way to g6. We're going to find out. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this, buddy? What is my opponent doing? Okay. Please tell me I'm not walking into some horrible trap. Oh. Where did that pawn come from? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I get the sense that I could have played this better. I still have the sense that I'm up a queen, so it probably doesn't matter. Alright, we're going to bet the house on h7 not being adequately defended. Yep, called it. 
I so called it. Well, that's pretty cool. I guess he never expected the queen to be on c2. Like, who in their right mind would put the queen on c2? I guess just me. So, that works. Um, Alright. We've got another anonymous opponent. Uh, so, let's protect against queen f7 mate stuffs. Um, meanwhile, the bishop and queen see a lot of squares, so this is a good formation. Uh, I might play the triangle system here. Uh, e6, c6, d5. Because, I mean, yeah, there's a gaping hole on d6, but how does my opponent occupy it? Uh, the weakness here is that f7 is super tender. Um, so I can't see it, but I don't think my opponent is going to like put a knight... Well, they'd have to... I don't know how they'd manage an attack on f7 that um, somehow I would miss, but maybe it's possible. Another key is I don't want to open the e-file, because even if it's legal, uh, this game does not tell you when checks happen. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like, a difference between this variant and Craigspiel is that in Craigspiel you get to see... Um, when you're in check. In this variant, surprisingly, you don't get to see that. Um, okay, let's just overprotect f6 and then put a piece on f6 and watch as it disappears. I'm super nervous about developing anything, because this opponent seems to um, either have learned something from a previous game, or uh, is just playing a lot more defensively than the last one. Um, so, this battle might be uh, quite the battle. Alright. Now, g7's tender, but, I mean, what can I do? I could put my knight on g6. Um, actually, if g7 hangs, do I even care? Here, let's... Ooh, okay, let's explore this side of the board. Okay, I see he's got an ape one. So the odds of him having maneuvered a rook to b3 specifically are pretty low. So I could play queen b6 here. On the other hand, oh, yeah, I figured there's probably pieces in this vicinity. Um, now I won't be able to see after he recaptures where the pieces are. However, I can guess that he either does bishop takes or queen takes. It's pretty safe to assume that one of those two is going to happen. And so the key question is, do you feel lucky? Um, no, but once I move the knight, I can pretty much see where the stuff is. So, okay, he did bishop takes. And I don't think he's planning a sack on e6, because he would have to get a knight to f4 to do that. Um, so I don't think he's ready to sack. We're seeing some pretty solid defensive moves. Oh, the bishop has retreated. Huh. All right. I guess I'll just castle. It doesn't really help me see anything, but long term, um, I'll need to do that anyway in order to complete development. Uh, but yeah, no, I see like the crude bishop b1, queen c2 idea. I'm pretty sure that's coming. Um, just saying.
Oh, I hope he doesn't have his other bishop on b2. That could be sad. Oh, okay. So... So he'd have to get a bishop out to g5 or something for his crew threat to work. Um... Here, let me harass this position. Maybe I've pinned a queen to a king. Probably not. But the very... I don't know, in the worst situation... Um, he just has to like move his queen to d3. Um, and I've just cost him a tempo and some agony trying to figure out about what to do here. Um... I wonder if he could have maneuvered a rook to h3 already. That would be sad. Alright, so I suppose I'm going to defend against any silliness that might happen there. He's probably too gun-shy to play bishop h6 because... Um, well, I don't know. He actually probably knows that my bishop's not on f8. I mean, I could have the bishop on f8, but the odds are pretty low. Hmm. Alright, so was this a pawn defended? Nope. I want to know where his stuff is, so I keep capturing. Um, all right, I'm guessing queen h6 is coming. Well, that's not h6, but pretty close. My guess was mostly accurate. All right, so we'll just attack the queen. No big deal. He's still got both rooks, so this could get pretty dicey. Okay. Um, something captured my stuff. Um... Alright, so we'll hit the knight. Oh, he took my bishop. Alright, we'll take his knight. Now, I can see where both his rooks are. So unless his king is on e1, um, this is just a free bishop. Actually, if his king... doesn't matter where his king is, this is a free bishop either way. Oh, I win. Okay, cool. Whew! What a game. What a game. But yeah, it's amazing how far you can get playing conservative moves. Um, it probably helps that I've played Craig Spiel before, but I'm not sure to what extent that actually does help. It allows me to know what moves I can make without um, endangering my own pieces, but I don't know that that really um, makes the game any easier. Because you can kind of figure that out pretty easily, I think. Um, so yeah, that's Dark Chess in a nutshell. Uh, once again, the link, and for those who are curious, Apparently you can only get the site over secure HTTP. I don't understand that, but apparently that's the case. So yeah. Um, I'm actually curious how you'd annotate a game of this. Um, it's not like an AI could figure out... Well, I mean, it could estimate, but... The AI wouldn't know, like, what it is that you know and what you don't know. Um, at least most AIs that have been written to date don't include Fog of War uh, sorts of stuff. I guess an exception to that would be uh, the StarCraft AI contest. Um, where they did write an AI that keeps track of... Um, potential builds the opponent could have done and scouts the opponent's territory trying to figure out um, 
you know, intelligence, uh, like what it is that they did build versus what it is that they could have built and how many resources they did collect versus um, what was available for them to have collected. So yeah, d4, d5 looks like a pretty strong opening. I'm going to break this up with e4, um, which looks crazy at first. Uh, okay, he takes it. We're just going to develop the knight. And yeah, I have no idea to what extent this pawn's protected or undefended. Um, but I have better vision. I don't know, I've got good vision of the center. And um, I can improve this vision. And I already know that his queen could not have made it to the e-file immediately. So I'm safe playing f3. So, so far, everything I've played is pretty safe. Oh no. Wow. Well, I hope uh, that the car did successfully start. Or that worst case, the, the car, he has an AC um, that is operational. Because otherwise that's sad. Okay, so I'm not sure where anything is. I'm going to push d5. This is like super risky, but I can't see the center unless I start moving stuff. Oh, okay. Now we know where his other knight is, so we take that. This knight's on c6. His pawn was on e6, now he's on d5. Um, I can probably get away with bishop f4. This is risky, because there could have been a bishop lurking on d6. Not very likely, but there could have been. So we'll step back. And, um, oh, actually, now that I think more about this, there's one really potent threat I should deal with. And that's the possibility I could be put in check and not told about it. That's different than Craig Spiel, where you're actually told when your opponent checks you. Um, this variant is just like, ah, you know, you'll have to figure that out on your own. Yeah, fiend shadow bishops are pretty strong. I haven't tried that yet. But that does look like a really interesting idea. I could see, I knew his one pawn was on e6 and it's gone to d5. His other pawn's on c7. So the only thing that could make knight d4 unsafe would be a queen on f6. Um, oh, but then, well, yeah, no, he could have done queen takes f, or queen takes d4 if I did knight d4 there. Alright, so let's see what's on the f file. I expect knight takes. Knight takes takes all the fun out of the game. <laughs> so yeah, now I can see his pawns were on g5 and f5. Um, if he doesn't push f4 right away, I play bishop e5 and I'm pretty good. If he does play f4, I'm not sure what... I oh, there we are. Um, here, let's risk it for the biscuit. Put everything on c7, and uh, hope that it's not defended by a bishop. <laughs> now where could his bishop be, though? Where could it be? If he plays f4, now I actually want to take on g4. Um, here, let's see if there's anything on a5. Okay, a5 is vacant. Um... Oh right, I did mention I was going to put my bishop here, so let's do that. So unless he has something on the e-file, he can't see my bishop. So, okay, he saw my bishop, or just guessed that I did something intelligent with it. Um, let's see if there's something on the e-file though. Oh, there might be. Bishop on d7 indicates the possibility of queenside castling. Because why else would you put it on d7? If not, well, maybe you could want to get the rook out this way, but that's an awfully passive way to develop. Um, Alright. 
So I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know where stuff is. Hopefully this does not hang a queen somehow. All right, so yeah, he plays h3, I have to respond g3, and I think I've successfully locked this up. Oh, it's my turn again. Um, so what's on the a-file? Just a pawn. Just a pawn. Okay, so where is he hiding? I can see like half the board. And he's not in that half. And yet he's got like a bishop, two rooks, and a queen all hiding somewhere. Um, here, let's do rook takes. So we can see what's on the f file. There's still the possibility that this rook is not hanging. I know it looks like it's hanging, but it probably isn't. Um, so... All he knows, apparently, I forget which bishop I took earlier. If it, if it, was, it must have been the light squared bishop. Uh, yeah, no, in fact, his light squared bishop took my bishop on b5. So we're in kind of a quandary where material is level, I'm down a pawn, but I can see all the world and he can't. So... Yeah, I mean, he's got to have something on the 7th rank there. But he also has no idea where my stuff is. Um, I'm guessing bishop g5. Let's see, did it actually play a move? Oh, he took my rook. Okay. I had to refresh to see that. Let's see. Did he play a move and I just didn't see it? Okay, yes, he moved this rook. Um, this is risky, isn't it? So now I'm predicting rook e1. This is super risky business, but what can you do? Yeah, now I'm trying to figure out, for all the possible positions of his king, um, where do I want to try to move my pieces to attack it successfully? I'm not sure why, like, this board just chooses not to show me some of the moves. Like, I have to refresh to get the moves. Uh, it's certainly a bug. Um, like, surely he must have taken the queen already. No, he didn't. He's contemplating how to capture the queen. I'm not sure how much that matters here, but... Um... All right, my turn. Let's get the king out of there. Hey, seek. So, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm not getting his move. Um, oh, he moved. All right, let's go back here. There is a strong possibility that I'm getting mated in very short order. Um, but, you know, we can at least put the king somewhere excited. Oh, there we go. Oh, his rook must have been on f3. I was afraid of getting back rank mated, um, but no, he got me. That was close. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be queen e7 or queen d7 there. Um, but yes, you can walk into check, and that means I did walk into check and he took my king. Um, somehow I thought he still had a bishop. Um, not sure how I got confused about that, but... 
if I realized the material imbalance was just me being down in exchange, I would not have played so aggressively. Um, well, no, I'm saying after the bishop traded on b5, he could have played queen d7. Like, you remember, he did do bishop takes bishop, after which queen d7 was possible. Um, yeah, got a good opponent that game. I'm starting to think e4 is way more fun than just that silly gambit I played, though. Also, um, I wonder, um, what's that opening? The Danish gambit. e4, e5, d4. I mean, just, like, gambit a whole bunch of pawns. I think that could be pretty strong in this variant. Um, uh, but you could have very mixed results with it, too. So, whoops, that's not what I intended to create. My mistake. Let's make a five minute game. All right, I've accepted somebody else's seek, and here we go. Yeah, pawns, well, pawns are useful defenders, but um, knowledge is also a value in this variant. All right, has my opponent moved? No. Okay. Well, I might just win this on time. We'll see. I can't even pre-move, though. Like, I can't do, like, rook takes e1, queen takes e1. None of those pre-moves are doable. All right. Is it still the opponent's turn? Yeah, sure still is. All right, well... I'm going to wager this opponent's just going to beat me on time while I make a new seek. Because we ain't got all day. We're going to play a game. <laughs> um, Alright, so we've got our seek out there. Got this other not started game. We've got this nuts. Oh, this game has started now. There we go. Here, let's take that. All right. So he recaptures. Let's. I wonder if he's gonna move the queen. Ah, he moved it. Oh, I don't actually get to see if the queen's attacking the bishop. Oh man. I blanked on that. For some reason I thought I would actually get to see, like, him having put me in check. Uh, but no such luck. Here, let's play d4. Okay, he's up to something. Because he didn't play c5, he didn't play e5. He's got no deep on. I smell a rat. Something's up here. But what? The other fun thing is, like, if his queen's on e6, he doesn't know that I just played pawn d4 unless he's, like, castled. Um, but now he knows. Now he knows that I'm developing. Just playing calm, sensible moves. Alright, we're gonna play h4. Another calm, sensible, developing move. Should I leave my king in the center? Oh, no, no, no. Castling here um, removes the possibility of choosing which direction to castle. Um, that liberty here could be fun. So, we're going to try to have some fun with this. Alright, so I see, like, he's got nothing over here. Yeah. I fully expect he's going to, like, somehow try to take this pawn. Um, but it's kind of difficult to reach, you know? He's probably fianchettoed queenside. Because he hasn't fianchettoed here. He hasn't done anything in the center. Um, so, yeah, he's probably doing something queenside. But what? 
We'll never know. All right, let's play a3. So we can't see if there's any pawns like on a5 or b6 or whatever, but um, I don't know. This is a nice little fortress we've got. Um, are we going to scout out b6? Well, at some point, maybe I will be forced to castle. Um, here, let's play bishop d3. Okay, so we could see this knight. Um, I was afraid there might be a bishop on that diagonal. There isn't a bishop there. I should have castled already. Oh, never mind. I regret nothing. <laughs> Except this queen might be on g3 and I might be dead. Um, but what are the odds, is the question. Odds are not very good. Okay, so there's nothing on g3. Um, I'm just gonna def... Okay, no, it's totally my turn there, you know? Uh, probably means I'm in check. Um, you know, I'm just gonna castle out of here. And he's gonna take my king. Yes, my king is so disappearing from the board this turn. It is very disappear. Um... Unless he's trying to figure out how it is that I castled out of check. Um, that might be what's confusing him right now. What bothers me is all I've taken are his knights, and I don't know where any of his ranged pieces are. Um, right, so he hasn't taken my king. Uh, wait, there's only one square on this diagonal that could be occupied without me knowing it. Um, still, this is a really scary situation. Um, yeah, let's get some knowledge. I worry that my knight might be pinned to my queen. Well, okay, so there's this possibility that there's something on h or f4. I should just play like g3 and queen d2, and I'll know. But also, I'm curious, like, if I can undermine this b pawn. Uh, there's risks and rewards for any move. Yeah, rook h4 actually does seem reasonable here. There's a possibility that I lose an exchange, um, but it's one that's not, I don't know, it's not in vain. I still think g3 dropping an entire pawn is probably a better way to go about it. Oh, he played h6, so now he sees my h-pawn. Oh, but now I also see g4. I don't know if I saw that g4 earlier or not, but seeing that it's vacant um, is encouraging. It lets me like freely move about. Um, the only thing I can't directly do... Oh, now I can do it. Yeah, I was afraid he might still have a pawn in f7. So, YOLO! Let's see if he does knight takes. If he does knight takes, he's prepared well for this. Um, uh, he is not prepared for this. Nobody tell him, alright? <laughs> oh wait, he knows my knight moved. Yeah. Oh wow. That's what makes this complicated. Wait, he didn't take on g6, because I bluffed him. Well, there was no knight to take on g6, but he could have done queen takes g6. And, yeah, he didn't expect the bluff. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. 
Yeah, but if he did queen g6, I probably would have responded knight e5 anyway. Um, I didn't expect that both rooks would still be on their starting squares. That's an interesting strategy. Limiting the mobility of both of your rooks just to make the game interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he saw that my knight moved because, like, it's no longer under attack by this bishop. And instead he's discovering an attack against the rook. But he's got to have figured that the knight moved to e5. But if he takes on e5, the knight who pawn takes, and my rook's discovering an attack on the king, and my pawn hits the queen. So this is just too much for him with, like, five seconds left. Um, and honestly, it's devastating even in normal chess, I think. Like, king c8, I don't know. It looks devastating. It probably actually isn't. King c8, bishop e4, bishop takes, queen takes, I'm hitting the rook. Uh, it looks scary, but, you know, maybe it's okay. All right. Well, that was a fun game. Uh, and for the curious, um, the links over here. I might end up switching from one chess variant to another, because what are the odds they'll be able to keep getting games um, in this variant? Um, it's not an easy variant to play. Still, I think spectating would be awesome if they somehow added that. Uh, I did find the source code for this project. It is on GitHub. So, in theory, if somebody wanted to run with it, or at least see how they did it, that's doable. Um, I'd probably more lean towards seeing how this is implemented and then try to copy that into um, my own code base for the Relay Chest server but that would be my tact. All right, well, we've gone pretty much an entire minute, and it's still my opponent's turn. Um, we've got, I mean, that first move can be pretty tricky. So, yeah, I think that might be it if I can't find an opponent. So let me go lo load up another site. Relay chess.org uh, full screen this stuff can we get the music I forgot I do need to log in oh no it's uh, it's not a secure connection um yeah, I don't see a volume slider, though. That's too bad. Let's see, is it still my opponent's turn? Apparently so. Alright, so we also got RelayChess.org. Um, oops, let's type this correctly. Yeah, I don't know if I'll manage to find an opponent for that either. Um, let's see. I can at least dismiss some of these windows that I don't need open. Reclaim some unused resources on my machine. Let's see. Do I still have that open? No, that's closed. All right, so that's that. Appear not to have any opponents for any of the variant stuff. I could also demonstrate um, the chess variants training site. Chess variants dot training. Um, so let's see. I don't even remember if I like made a login here or not. We'll see. Um, Save my password. Oh! Apparently I have not made a... I don't remember making an account here, or I did, and I just don't remember how to log in. That's okay, it's all tactics anyway. Um, 
So, yeah. There's that. Let's offer a draw. Let's see if the opponent takes it. We could get a move one draw here, if we're lucky. Right, let me just pre-move, take the king. Oh! It's my move now. Okay. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but we've got a game on our hands. Does doing this, like, no. No, I was just messing around. They had nothing to do with the fact that a move got registered. Okay. Here, let's do something a little more gutsy. This is something I don't usually do, because it could lose the game immediately. Um, although I suppose I'd see a bishop on b5 if that could lose. I keep forgetting that this is not um, actual like dark chess with the whole nonsense of you can't see where your pawns can move, but you can only see where they can capture. Um, which is actually a lot more frustrating than this variant. Okay, let's play a knight out here. Move a bishop over here. Um, lash out, because we can. <laughs> okay. Lash out again. Let's see how much fun this can be. Oh, I went on time. Oh no, okay, g5 apparently like doubly hung the pawn. Um, but yeah, my opponent had no time left. The fog of war's a callin. Yeah. Well, um, this is possibly not the safest um, game of dark chess ever played. As I'm hanging g5. My king is in the center, I've only developed two pieces, and my opponent's got a really nice setup going. I actually like that. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine, see. This interface is a little bit clumsy compared to what we're familiar with, so... I should expect some stuff. Ha! Uh... I did not make this. Um, no, this... Um, I don't actually know who developed this. Uh, I think the person did put their name here somewhere. Um, but uh, the source code can be found on GitHub. Um, you go to this website and it links to the GitHub page. Um, I think at the bottom of the page. As you can see, like, Dark Chess Frontend was developed by... Who was it? Um, A-H-A-P-X, who is Anarchy. Okay. But yeah, no, they licensed this under GPL and stuff, so they're good people. I mean, is this not GitHub? What do you think it is? Yeah, it's developed by Anarchy. Um... But no, do they, like, I don't understand what it is with people publishing their code and not putting their name on it. It's like the person who turns in their homework assignment and doesn't put their name on it. Um, like, what's the point? Uh, why would you not put your name with your code? Anyway, here's how you install it, you know, if you've got Linux installed. Um, and then there's a front end to install with it, too. Okay, so... Huh. I was about to say I could play G4 and stuff, but... Um, here, let's just do it this way. Since, although G4 is legal, it might not be the best move. 
I can just play g3 in Fianchetto that way. He's confused why I didn't just take the pawn. I probably should have. Um, honestly. Although I like having the only pawn in the center. There's definitely value to that. Okay. Well, so much for the only pawn. Now it's more like the lonely pawn. Oh well. We tried. Let me guess. Bishop b4 check. Is bishop b4 check going to happen? I wonder. It's funny. Um be interesting if you could only castle out of check if you didn't know you were in check. That would be one heck of a twist and would cause a nightmare coding wise. So actually that might not be a good idea. Um, yeah, but what kind of questions would you be afraid of being asked? Like, why did you code this in Python? I don't know. So... Oh, it's still my turn now. Alright. Let's just blindly assume that everything is safe somehow. Wait, where is this king? I want to know. Where did this king go? Is it over? Okay. Okay, okay. I see a bishop. It's probably going to take my bishop. That's not taking my bishop. So this knight did not come from g5. It came from f6. Because the knight came from f6, I know I can get away with knight e5. So there's no pawn on f6. Because the knight just moved from f6 because it went, didn't come from g5. So... Um, now, he might have rook on e8, so maybe this loses a pawn. Um, hard to tell. Um, so, I don't think that he has, like, a rook lined up on this c file. Um, here we go. YOLO. <laughs> there could have been anything on this side of the board. Queen b3 was like super dangerous. Um, but I seem to have fared um, pretty well with this danger. Okay. So we saw his queen on d7 earlier, right? Does he know that we saw his queen? I mean, he surely must um, be aware that we knew this queen was there. Um, yeah, I remember where your queen was, buddy. I can see your knight. Well, I don't want to take it. Um, I'd rather see what's over here. Alright, so... I'm gonna guess that there's nothing defending b7. Oh, he got me. I've been hooked. I got him. Oh, that wasn't so bright though. Um, well, this could end poorly. We'll see if he's confident enough to play d1 straight away, or if he needs to play rook d8 first. And assuming he's playing rook d8 here, then that's just a free queen. <laughs> oh, this is so mean. This is so mean. Alright. Uh, yeah, remembering what your opponent did can be useful. <laughs> Who would have expected the bishop to be on f3, right? I like, yes, I could just put my queen in front of the pawn. But, you know, since I have this tricky nonsense I can play one, I play the tricky stuff. 
There's no way he could have expected Bishop takes Squee, right? I mean, in that last instant before my bishop took it, he'd see, hey, look, my queen's forking the queen, the king, and the... Oh. Oh, right. Yeah. So at least he'd know where the... He knew uh, the attacker immediately before uh, it captured the queen. But it's only in that last moment that regret could be seen in the eyes of the enemy. Oh, man. That's so mean. And yet so clever. So, um... Alright. My turn. Okay, we're gonna... Um, you know, it feels like um, just the position, I don't know, 1d4 seems too strong. It should just be banned as meta in this game. It just seems to, like, um, 1d4 encourages 1d5, and it's like if you play 1d4, you should have to, your opponent should just be able to see that you played it. Um, because otherwise there's too many risks, um, associated with ever playing anything other than d5 on move one. So yeah, I think if white plays 1d4, that should be visible. Um, otherwise, I don't know. Maybe I'm just overstating its strength, but, um... I'm not sure. Okay, so... Huh. There's nothing here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, is there a queen on e7? Let's find out the dangerous way. <laughs> oh, there's no queen on e7. Okay. Okay. Well, now we know where the queen is. Ah. <laughs> well, that was one heck of a gamble. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, you would think that if I play pawn takes d5, um, my knight is probably on e2 rather than on f3. Because... Uh, pawn takes d5 is like ultra super mega risky. Um, although I guess you didn't get to see like which piece took on d5. Unless your queen was already on d6 or something. Um, yeah, no, this is, it's a tricky game. And if your queen had been on e7, I would have just been like toast right there. Um, but I got lucky. I wonder, is there, is there a meta for the game where you can, hmm, if I play this and he plays, well, I'll just see. I think, uh, the player who makes the seek, uh, first gets white. And that's not fair, but... I think that's how this server works. Okay, it's my turn again. Okay, well this is strange. Um, okay. Let's have some fun. Let the fun begin. Oh, he's probably... well, we'll see. We shall see. Here, just to be safe. Just to be unsafe. Yeah, that was a risky move. This now becomes, um, well, yeah, let's just take that. Because I want this knowledge of what's over there. 
Here we go. Oh man, he actually got to see. I thought he wasn't going to take that. Oh, man, that almost worked out really nicely. <laughs> See, the idea was to just keep the tension on the H-file as long as possible um, while building up other stuff. So, if I had to guess... Yeah, I think building a fortress could be a really interesting thought. Because then your opponent has to figure out how to break the fortress. But I don't think it's just a matter of a fortress for the king, but just a fortress in general. Like, you see, every game I'm basically building something that, okay, maybe it has a weak point somewhere, but discovering the weak point is difficult and expensive often. Um, so, I don't know. I think the idea of building a fortress is just really powerful in this variant. Um, there's definitely a lot of trench warfare going on, where you can't see uh, the line of battle so clearly. I mean, yes, this d4, d5 is pretty well cemented in the position, but um, everything else is not so clear. Ooh, okay. Okay. This, uh, this is getting messy. Oh, that was a knight that took it? Oh, right, the knight was on f6. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Well, this is, this is a mess. Um... Okay, we'll just develop. Everything's okay. Maybe. At least there's no queen. There's that one consolation. That, um... At least there's not a queen attacking my stuff. Hmm. Not sure where much of anything is in this position. Okay, so that's knight takes d4. Um, oh, that's this knight takes on d3. That makes sense. That's a good logical play. Well, that was bishop takes d4. Alright, so there's no dark squared bishop anymore. There's just a light squared bishop moving about. Um, which means I should try to stay away from uh, squares which could be endangered. Um, I'm nervous about doing stuff here. Okay. Well, oh, I lucked out, apparently. I got so lucky. But I had to risk it. I didn't have much of a choice in that position. We still got a piece on the loose. Um, Ooh, this is ugly. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, hopefully this doesn't get me killed. Uh, this is quite a mess. Okay, so there's his rook. There's the rook. 
We finally got the rook. Yeah. That would have been a long and awkward battle. Um, had he just like slowly, gradually tried to move the pawns up the board, probably I would have had to go for some crazy counterattack. Um, I'm not sure whether I would have wanted my rook to be on the second rank or the first rank to defend. But since I can only see one of the pawns at a time, at least with the rook, I can't see like if any of those is hanging. Um, and certainly taking this... In fact, pushing on the queen side could have been interesting too. It's difficult since I only have a queen and a rook remaining, so anything I capture could hang one of my two most valuable pieces. Oh, I could see the bishop on a4 because this pawn can move to a4. That's not typical of dark chess. Um, it's very atypical of dark chess. I actually kind of find it as interesting. Yeah, no, that, that's a really interesting thought, though. Um, and this particular flavor of dark chess, I kind of like it, that you can see where the pawns can move. Um, it makes the game, I don't know, less about random king hangs and more about um, reacting to stuff in an intelligent manner. Um, but I was going to guess that bishop a4 was going to happen soon anyway, but it helps that I could see it too. Alright, so... Here we go. There's a chance this might be a terrible idea. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, it worked out. It worked. Um, wasn't the best idea, but wasn't the worst. Yeah, this game is very much, very knowledge heavy, I guess. So, I'm not sure what he sees at this point, but it's probably enough to make him really confused. Okay. So my plan was actually to play knight e7 here. Um, and the subtle point of knight e7, oh. Well, I might end up losing in major exchange. We'll see. Oh, no. Okay, there's no rook there. That's fortunate. Oh, well, check this out. Other game knowledge, right? So he captures that. I castle. I can see the rook. I castled through check there, guys. That's game knowledge. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, no, I read the rules before playing, so I have a slight advantage in that respect. Uh, wait, I was so obsessed with this idea of defending my stuff that, um, well, hopefully I'm okay. Wait, he's got no queen. And I'll be damned if a rook is protecting this. He does have a knight somewhere. He does have a knight somewhere. Do I feel lucky? Sure, why not? All right, back we go. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that was a thing. Um, so now as long as I don't lose my king to a knight, then we're okay. Let's see, can I... let's get some knowledge. Oh, he moved it. I can't see where he moved it to, but probably that square. Um, hmm... Here we go. Just lighten up the board. A bishop protecting a knight. Knight covers pretty much everything in that vicinity. Okay, so he takes the bishop. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's no sneaky stuff. It's a huge bummer, right? Oh. I forgot now if I take that he's actually going to move. Oh, no he's not. Never mind. Alright, well, that was a game. That was an invalid castle. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think castling should be legal unless you happen to know otherwise. Um, but that would probably be too difficult to code. Yeah, castling out of or through check, or even into check, is pretty crazy. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about all that. <laughs> okay. Let's try this. Let's try this. Shit. Well, <laughs> that was a fun game while it lasted. Um, yeah. He got me good. <laughs> okay. Well, that was... I'm um, down a rook and a knight. Um, people have seen worse than this. Alright, so how am I going to survive this? Let's figure something out. Is there anything sneaky I can still do? Um, I actually knew that pawn was there. Okay. Oh, this is not faring well for the home team. Of course he would do night takes. So, yeah, let's just get the queen out of danger. Oops, well, okay. Okay, yeah, so much for being subtle. I forgot he had an f-pawn. Well, okay, that escalated quickly. Um, so that's the problem with the fianchetto. Uh, at some point I stopped caring, I will admit, but... Um, yeah. Blunderman has been out-blundered. So... That's the risk with fianchettoing. That's, in general, why I don't do it. Um, but I tried it. It was okay. GG. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah. Turns out the Scandinavian's pretty strong. Um, yet another reason that d4 is preferred to e4. Uh, yeah, Scandinavian, pretty good opening. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, the site is named Dark Chess. Alright, let's see if we can get another Seek. Yeah, who knew that the Scandinavian could be so strong? Actually, you know, the Fianchetto might be okay if you just, like, play Knight F3 or Knight F6 first. Then that leaves open the possibility that your opponent just pawn rushes you. Um, so that might not be worth it. Also, I wonder about like flank openings. I'm curious how good they could be. So again, um, so those curious, I did not develop this. Um, another anonymous developer created this about nine months ago. 
um, well, about a year ago, and they maintained it for a few months, and apparently um, thought this is good enough. So, yeah, we're going to play some of it. It's good fun. I wish this were doable over the board somehow. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to, uh, if you, like, can't get in with your password, I'm not sure how to recover it. Um, I know I created an account. I didn't even have to check my email or anything, and I could just log in after I created it. Uh, doing proper sign-in actually is tricky. And I should probably, if I'm going to contribute to this code base at all, uh, contributing 2FA or MFA would probably be um, a reasonable or useful thing. So people could just log in with um, accounts that were authenticated by Google or some other service. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it, it would work that way, though. So I'm going to stick with playing E4. Just because E4 is fun. Alright, so I'm not sure what my opponent played there. Still don't know. I think I might find out when it's least convenient. Alright, so we push the pawn to get some more knowledge of the position. I'm going to guess that my opponent did at least one Fianchetto. Um, interesting. So I could play this pretty... well, that's not safe. I could play this safely, though. Yeah, that definitely looks like a Fianchetto to me. Um, looks very Fianchetto-y. Oh, he saw my bishop, though, because his pawn can move there. Um, so my trolling is not so effective when my opponent can see it. Um, this is pretty effective, though. So he has no pawn on g6 anymore. Um, it's moved forward to f5. Here, let's just explore a bit. Oh, he didn't take. Um, do I think he's castled? I don't know. We're going to back up and just imagine that he is not castled. Because if he has, I could have plenty of fun on that king side, but I can't be sure. Um... All right, I'm going to have to play sensible moves now. It's a huge shame. Okay, now we're going to risk it. We're up enough material that we can make these sorts of risks. So now the bishop moves away. Okay, so I'm not exposing my queen on this line. So he did not castle. Um, oh. Pawn takes d5? Something take or pawn takes d4. Or something took on d4. Um, uh, let's take this. Oh, but I don't know if... Oh. I forgot he could have plenty of pieces still around that could be capable of taking that. Um... Man, I was trying to be sneaky and tricky and stuff. And there's just not much benefit to being stealthy, I guess. Wait. Okay, so let's take that. Uh, 
I think he... Yeah, he expects my rook is on d1. That's a rational expectation. You couldn't have expected my queen to have made it up that um, that far up the board, though. I didn't mention that, like, my queen made it up to, like, h7 or f7 and all that. Um, I don't know if he was listening or not, but, yeah, it's a, it's a very risky game. Um, so, you know, I figured, you know, if I trade the queens, he probably does king takes and I check him and it looks like mate. And then I saw knight takes and I'm like, oh, hang on. Um, and I figured out, you know, I could just pin this knight, and he doesn't know that it's pinned. Um, yeah. Yeah, you have to take some risks, uh, to be successful. But, at the same time, I figured, you know, I could probably get away with this. So, it made sense for me to do what I did. Um, I risked a pawn for, like, winning the game, so it worked out. But... Yeah, he couldn't have known. Like, there's no way to have known exactly how I set that up. Okay. And unlike Ultra Bullet, um, you can actually sort of, like, prepare for your opponent's attacks. You can have some idea what they might be threatening. Whereas an Ultra Bullet... Sometimes the pieces move too quickly, and you pre-move the wrong thing, and it's all over. Um, which, uh, it's entertaining. Yeah, I find it amusing that players pre-move, um, um, even an Ultra Bullet. It's, like, super dangerous to pre-move, for those who don't know. Well, uh, I don't know. Seems like we've played quite a few good games. Um, it seems like finding an opponent is getting trickier than it used to be. See, I think I had... Oh, yeah, I could still try to get um, S-Chess going. Let me see if I could get that going in the background. Where did I put the interface? Uh, it's just Windboard, right? Connect to an ICS. dun dun, dun. Um, let's see, what was my login on the server? Did I have this login or no? Oh, um, fine. No, I didn't have that login. Maybe I just had the admin account. I guess logging in as admin is okay. Yeah, so if I want to examine the Seer one game. Oh, never mind. We've got this game. Sheep and L. All right. Oh, I can't click and drag. I have to click, click to move. This is a little different. All right, hopefully the move did submit. All right, cool. So... Yeah, I guess that's the other downside with streaming this, is that, like, viewers um, might not be able to participate. Wait, what? I have these dark squares here. The other kind of dark squares. Um, okay. 
I'm not afraid of him having that knowledge, I suppose. Yeah, I tried not to commit things that would give away what was going on. Um, although, you never know what I could have done. I could have said something that would just, like, I don't know. Alright. We'll just keep pretending that we don't know about that. Just keep pretending. Um, and then stop pretending all of a sudden and see, like, what he thinks. A retreat. Interesting. Not what I expected. Um, let's see, do we get another retreat? I mean, how could he keep retreating? Doesn't he eventually run out of squares to run to? Okay. We'll take one of those. And... Um, this looks risky, doesn't it? Okay. That is strange to me. That's not so surprising. What confused me is that the rook was not on h8, and then suddenly it was on h8. Um, I have to admit, that took me for a bit of a spin. Now, if I had to guess where the rook was, it was probably here, on e8. So when I go bishop e5, it exploits the fact that his rook is no longer on e8, and that his knights have both moved. Um, so... You can do some tricky stuff with partial knowledge. Um, here, let's see, is there... Nope, there's no opposition there. Um, okay, I'm curious what lies beyond. Still curious what's over here. So now if my queen were on d1, he could just take it, but it's not. Um, so he's got a queen and a rook on the loose. Um, we're going to find them. Well, we found one of them. Oh, right, there's still that damn... Po oh, okay. I forgot he had a bishop. Um... Check? Yeah, that's check. Nice. Of course, I can't see where the king went, but um, it went somewhere. Now, the odds that his queen takes... Yeah, okay. I was predicting that he couldn't do queen takes bishop, because it would have had to be on the g-file. And the odds of a queen just randomly ending up on the g-file are pretty low. Okay, well, this might not be the best possible outcome for the opponent. Um, yeah, <laughs> bummer. All right, I, and that's right, he always had that pawn on g4, so even with this queen on the g file, yeah. Yeah, indeed, my opponent did get outplayed that game, although maybe I got lucky. Um, taking his queen did help me a bit. Um, yeah, but it's amazing what you can do with partial knowledge of where stuff is at. Yeah, it'd be great if you could replay the game. That would be one thing that would really add to this. Um, yeah, now this is dark chess. Specifically, like, if you go to just HTTP, somehow that doesn't find the page. But if you go uh, to secure HTTP, then that does find this page. So I don't know what that's about, but um, yeah. I also don't know who authored the page. I just know they've published their source code on GitHub under an open source license. So 
It's not intended for commercial use, although, um, you know, maybe somebody might find a way to make it commercial, I guess. I don't know why they would, but, yeah, no, it's a pretty great variant. Um, so, it's pretty cool to discover this this morning. Okay. Ah! There be hijinks, and low jinks, and all kinds of jinx. Um, huh. I wonder. Oh, I guessed it. I so guessed it. Okay, we're going back. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. Let's see if he just takes it. It's like super tempting to capture things when you can. Um, um, I am very confused by that. <sighs> See, if I just knew what were over here, I mm, that's a bummer. This is the downside of dark chess, is I can't just play queen d5 here. I have to play cautiously. Um, oh, we're going to develop. And take that. And take that. Okay, he saw it. Yeah. This is why it's always dangerous to... Like, I could have played queen d5 earlier. I was considering it. Um, I didn't know that there was a pawn on e4. I'm not sure how I was not aware of that, because I saw it earlier. Um, but yeah, I was thinking, what if he castled queenside, and I could have played queen d5 and queen takes a2. Um, yeah, it does, it's a really hard variant. This might be too hard for people. Um, so, I don't know, should we leave it there? Should we go over to Relay Chess at this point? Um, again, game replay would be such a nice feature to have. <laughs> Although, I don't know. It might ruin some of the um, awesomeness of just having no knowledge of either. Uh, it just seems like if you could predict what was going to happen, maybe that would ruin the game in some way. It is interesting to note, though, like, if queen takes g7, I could castle and, like, put my king through check and into check, just going after the queen. Uh, which doesn't make very much sense. Um, well, no, I guess in that case I don't know that the queen's there, but say these pawns were both gone, the queen on g7, I could still castle. You can castle into check even knowing, when you know that you are castling into check. And even when you know that your opponent knows that you know and so forth. But it's pretty silly. Yeah, it's definitely not a royal king at that point. Um, is it really through check? You know, that other game where I figured I just exchange queens and then after rook takes d1 I just castle. Because I figured he probably played rook takes d1, but I'm going to castle anyway. That's pretty funny. I guess I'm of the opinion that if the opponent like takes the rook that you just castled with, that that counts as checkmate, but I don't know. Somehow the insanity of the rules is somewhat funny too. All right. Any bets on knight c3 here? Okay, let's just assume knight c3 got played. Oh, he saw it. <laughs> okay, well, I tried. 
I tried so hard. Got so far. In the end, it didn't really matter. I had to fall to lose it all. In the end, it didn't really matter at all. You know, let's just develop this way. Now he can see this knight. Unless he's put something between the queen and that. But So like he knows that um, I'm protecting this square. He's fully aware of my ideas here. Oh. Well, okay. Humbug. We're going to take there. He's giving a bishop for a knight. That's interesting. I wonder what he hopes to gain by that. Hey, MC. We're just playing some dark chess. Um... So, as long as this pawn never makes it to e4, there can never be a pawn on e5. So, I figure my knight's pretty safe. Unless I'm informed otherwise. Oh, there we go. So, wait, he had no pawn on e4 or on c4. So, I should be able to take this. And if he takes back... Worst case, I'm just losing a minor for... Um... Well, he didn't take back. I don't understand why not. Okay. We'll just make vague, threatening moves somewhere in this general direction. Um, hmm. Hmm. One area where this differs from normal dark chess is that pawns can see where they can move and pawns can see where they can capture. So there was a pawn on c3, right? Um, uh, I'm going to take this knight. This knight's too tricky. Um, so yeah, I don't know what just took on c5. I'm thinking it was probably the rook. I was incorrect. But this is the other half of the... Oh, okay. He gets the exchange back. Okay, so he's doing okay now. His rook is probably still on d1. I don't know if the king is on c1 or on uh, a1. Um, okay, we're going to go back. And then if he pushes d6, um, just let him have this protected past pawn. No, he's got two rooks, though. Um, I thought I took one of his rooks at some point. I did not. Meaning this could get really ugly. Um, but he's got two rooks. He doesn't... He might have a pawn on c3. If that's on c3, I'm dead. Um... Okay. This is spooky. Here, let's take that. And take that a second time. And if he does rook takes, take it a third time. Okay, I'm not sure why he didn't expect... Oh, he probably figured that my rook captured on g4. Um, this is spooky. So what I'm going to do... Let's try to extend the range of the rook. Wait. I don't know. Okay, so I've taken one, two, three, four, five pawns. I don't know where the remaining pawns are. I know he has one on d5. So I'm going to play this to gain some more knowledge, even though now I'm giving up knowledge of the fifth rank. But I do know that his rook can't make it to c5. Okay. Here comes the dangerous part of the game. So he plays rook takes d6. Um, he's probably going to check me next. <laughs> oh, 
Oh dear. The regret is so real with that move. <laughs> that he, he takes the pawn. And then he realizes um, just what a awful position he's in. Uh, technically, yeah, how did my rook end up there? Um, so I'm trying to remember exactly how it happened. Perhaps viewers can recall it better. You remember your pawn was on d5, right? You had this pawn on d5, I had a pawn on e7. So... I couldn't go through the center. I didn't know whether your rook was on e1 or d1. Um, but by the time I played bishop takes rook, I figured you probably didn't have a rook on the a file. So when I played this bishop takes rook, um, I think I'd maneuvered my rook around to like b2 and a2 and stuff. Or I'm trying to remember, did I end up going, th yeah, I think I went like through a5 to a2 or something. But it was a heck of a gamble on my part, but I figured since I just took on d1, um, your king was not going to be on a1, and your rook was probably somewhere in the center trying to do the sensible thing of helping your pawn promote. So I, um, I did this hooking stuff of my rook being um, on the active side of the pawns. As long as you didn't play rook takes e7, that was cool. If you did play rook takes e7, I would have had to go after the d-pawn. Um, knowing that I still had this pawn on c4, and that we've traded so many pawns over here that this pawn on d5 was isolated. And since it's isolated, I'm probably safe-ish against it. Um, can probably manage to somehow win the pawn in a game of dark chess. The one thing that's scary, though, is the possibility that your rook might start checking me and taking my stuff on the seventh rank. Um, so, yeah, when I played this check on my last move here, I was thinking you probably would check me in response, and then I just take your king. Um, although, the other thing is that you just lifted your rook. Like, you just took my pawn, or something like that. Yeah, you pushed d6. I just took, you played rook takes d6. And so I checked because I knew your rook was no longer on the back rank. And you probably could have guessed that this was a check. Um, even if it was on b1 instead of a1. So if I were white here, after rook takes d6, I would probably just play king g2. I Even though that's risky also. Um... I got lucky, and that's all that counts, I guess. Or we could just say that the rook teleported, which sounds so much cooler. It'd be interesting though if... Um, if somehow you could rule out d5 against e4, um, if you could just play e4 and not be afraid of d5, then maybe it's maybe this um, variant works better. Yeah, this is some people call it dark chess. Some people call it fog of war chess. I think this could enliven any variant. Like, it's complete nonsense in some cases, because you can't see what's going on. But in other cases, it can get quite strategic. So, let's see, is it, still my, uh, is it still my opponent's move? Yeah, probably. So, yeah. As much hype as there is um, for another variant at the moment, I think this is a pretty cool one. Now, we'll have to ignore that one game where I, like, fianchettoed and just got completely wrecked for doing it. Um, like, I saw other people fianchettoing, and I wanted to be cool and do it too, and it just didn't work out. Um, so we'll have to ignore that one. But if you ignore that loss, 
then I've got a pretty good record here. Like, a lot of wins. So... I wonder, can I, like, select a game and replay... Okay, the games are still here. I don't know if I can replay them. I could certainly see my active game. I could see the final position of any ended game, but I don't know that I can go back. Huh. Hey, Josh. Welcome. The Fall of Man. Well... That's pretty dramatic for a username, gotta say. So yeah, you can see the final position of any of these games, but there's no way to go back through the move list. Um, I guess if I contribute anything to this code base, maybe that's the thing. I mean, people like other features like a rematch button, but... You know, anybody can do that. On the other hand, I'm not sure how hard it is to deploy this stuff. Um, like, I found the repository over here. There's the front end. Uh, same author wrote the back end. Here it is. Um, he added chat nine months ago. He created this stuff a year ago. He's done 65 commits. He's even got a readme, which is amazing. Like, this sort of technical documentation is... It's just glorious for anybody working to um, work on projects. Having some sort of technical spec stuff is just really useful. And the front end isn't too shabby either. Um, so... Looks like I might win this one on time. Let's put a new seek out there. Yeah, another thing that could be crazy here would be a simul, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so maybe I should try setting up one, a server for this dark chest stuff. I wonder if I could run it on a custom port number. And that way I could run it alongside all my other chess server stuff. Hmm. I don't know. Also, this chat... I like it. Well, I don't know why some people bother putting this stuff here when they can just make a Discord channel. Uh, where's the clock? Uh, in this case, the clock is over here. Saying... 55 seconds until the game is decided in my favor. Um, then we have my not started game just sitting there. Um, but yeah, I think I might win this one. There's no way to add time to the clock. Not that that's a concern either. Um, But yeah, the main reason I uh, hold off on like contributing this uh, variant to the repo is what if like other chess servers take up this variant and then I've contributed to the wrong repository? That would be sad. Um, so that's kind of why I hesitate on just immediately contributing code to this project is because, you know, it might get contributed to some other repo. Like, I don't know. I'm surprised this... Like, okay. Uh, ICC did um, make Craigspiel, but they didn't make this. I don't understand. Like, this seems way more interesting than Craigspiel. Because in Craigspiel, you can't see any of your opponent's stuff, no matter what you're attacking. Maybe Craigspiel was just a lot easier to code. I don't know. Either way, um, yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, so feel free to keep playing on here. I think I'm going to take a break. We've had an interesting session. Quite a few fun games. Um, and, yeah, 
maybe next time I come back and do some other variants. Um, we'll see. Hope you had fun watching and participating. Um, I don't really have any ideas for how you do an AI for this. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. I just don't have any best idea. So I'm probably not going to make an AI for this anytime soon, but I'm sure tons of people will. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching. Hope that's been fun or educational or something. And uh, see you around.